Hey, welcome to the pod. It is currently 6.20 in the morning and I've already done my morning routine and I just really wanted to talk to you guys. <laughs> um, there's been some crazy stuff happening in life lately and I wanted to update you because, you know, it might inspire you or help you along your way. And um, so I've got a pretty cool story to tell you today. I'll start with a couple of updates though. So um, Justin, my boyfriend is coming to visit on the weekend. I'm so excited about that. Um, then also my, so this is a work situation. Um, my boss, no, so, okay. We'll backtrack. I work for Gaia Minerals. And if you want to look that up, it's G U I Y A Minerals. Um, and it's this like natural, organic, like vegan, non-toxic, skincare, uh, sorry, skincare, it's basically skincare, but it's makeup, it's mineral makeup. And it's like really great product. And I believe in it so much. Like I'm not even a makeup person and I wear the BB cream and the blush sometimes. And I wear the lip gloss like every fucking day. Um, I love it and I know it's going to do well. And I know that like it deserves more energy than I can give it because I'm giving my energy to you guys and the podcast and I'm writing my book and everything. And think about energy as like one of your most important resources, right? Time and energy are everything and energy more so than time. Um, and I was thinking about it cause you know, my boss is going through like the early sort of growth stages of the business and it's going really well and it's expanding literally every month and people are just obsessed with it. And, um, I was looking at it and I was like, it needs more fire under in the marketing department, which is my department. So I kind of like took a bird's eye view perspective, took myself out of the equation for a moment. And I was like, if I was consulting, what would, I say, like, what would I, what would I observe in this situation? So I looked at it and I was like, yep. First of all, like I'm doing so many different things. Like I'm the only person in the marketing department and I'm doing like the content creation, the editing, organizing the shoots, sending product out to people to try and review. I'm, um, doing the graphic design. I'm doing the WordPress backend website stuff. <laughs> doing the email marketing, making those things, blog writing, copywriting, all that stuff, doing all the captions and the, you know, all of it. And I was like, it needs more fire under it in the content creation department. Like someone going out, actually like creating a stir, taking it to the people, like it needs more. And I looked at my time and capabilities and I was like, I could probably put a little bit more energy into this, but I was like, I, I, could, I try, I genuinely tried for a bit there to, and I just, I'm already putting heaps of energy in. It's not like I'm slacking, but I just had these blocks. There were these big blocks there. And I was like, well, it's almost like I couldn't. And I was like, well, it's obvious. Like I already kind of knew that my energy is really needed here. But I was like, this is just obvious to me that I like the universe is like, no, <laughs> don't put your energy, like not all of it, not even, not more of it into that. You need to put it into the podcast and the book and helping people and just serving the universe. Um, so I was like, yeah, fair enough. So anyway, I had a conversation with my boss like a week or two ago. And I was like, babe, I've been looking at the marketing department. And I was like, I took a, you know, consul consultant perspective. Um, and what I would say to you is that what I would tell you to do is put your full-time marketing coordinator down to part-time and have her like coordinating, doing all of the other things. Cause she's like multifaceted in all these different areas. So like, you know, saves you hiring a bunch of other people to do all that stuff and then get on a casual content creator for like 15, 20 hours a week. And that I was like, you know, it just needs more fire under it. It needs more energy than I can give. It needs more. It needs someone else who's really excited to just fucking make the coolest content ever and just, you know, and she was like, nah, nah, we'll just leave it as it is and we'll hire some UGC creators every couple of weeks to, you know, make some content. And I was like, all right, that's a good idea. Fair enough. And then a week went by and she contacted me and she was like, 
babe, I'm feeling that you can't put your energy into this. And I was like, slay, you are. (laughs) She was like, I'm feeling X, Y, Z. Like I'm just, I feel like, you know, you need to put your energy into the podcast. And she was like, am I like right with this? Like, am I, and I was like, no, yeah, I'm not going to gaslight you 100%. I was like, yeah, I'm trying to put more energy in. I just, I can't. And, um, yeah, so that was cool. She, she felt it and she was like, could we put you down to part-time or contractor and, you know, use your energy for the podcast and stuff that you need to, um, you know, you'll have a couple of extra days per week to do all that stuff. And she was like, can you go down to part-time? Like, can you afford that? And I was like, no, not at no, but I will figure it out. You know what I mean? Like, I know I will figure it out. Like I've never, never not figured it out. (laughs) So I was like, it'll be fine. Um, and she was like, okay, wonderful. She was like, you know, take the weekend, think about it and let me know Monday. Um, and she was like, if you have to stay full time, like we can do it for a little bit longer and just give you more time and everything, but let me know Monday. And I was like, okay. So I told Justin, like I text him and I was like, Hey, my boss wants to put me down to part-time hours Um, and then I kind of just was busy for the rest of the day and didn't like talk to him. And he called me that night and he was like, so I've been brainstorming and blah, blah, blah. And he just like spitballed some options with me. And I was like, that's so nice. And Belle was like, do you, instead of going part-time, do you want to go contractor, slightly higher hourly rate? And I was like, cool. So, you know, at least rent and food is covered barely, but, (laughs) um, so yeah, I've got other, I've got a few other things that I can do, some stuff up my sleeve because I've got so many skills in so many areas. And I've also just got a shit ton of trust in the universe. So like I woke up. So, oh yeah, we spoke on Monday and it's been confirmed and everything. So, um, I was like, when do you want to do this? And she was like ASAP. So she's talking to her accountant and everything. And I'm going down to a contractor or a casual, I'm not sure. I got to talk about it a bit more. So I'm going to have two whole extra days per week. So to just work on the podcast and write my book and just free up that energy. And I cannot wait to see what happens from that. Because like, as soon as that decision was made, I had this feeling inside me of like, oh, like this feels completely right. This feels like the most right thing that was supposed to happen. And I woke up, I think yesterday morning with a smile on my face thinking about it. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have so much more energy soon. And I was like, universe, I see what you're fucking doing here. Like I can fucking see it because back when I had to quit the marketing place, I didn't know what I was going to do next. And I had to just take that plunge. I was like, it it was, you know, if I quit, it'll force a change. (laughs) And everything worked out. I was terrified. I was shitting my pants. I was so anxious for weeks. Oh my God. Cause I still had like three weeks there before I actually left and didn't know what I was going to do. I was applying for jobs, had a couple of interviews lined up, um, right before I got offered this job that I have now. So, <laughs> and it all worked out. And then there was a point in time when I had to just like have this conversation with my boss to let her know that I'm going to be doing all this stuff and that, you know, I can't be working for her forever and I need to start working my way out of there. And that was terrifying, but I felt the universe like press that on me. And so I spoke to her about it. Like, again, just wanted to fucking vomit, but she took it so well. And she was so beautiful and helpful. She's honestly the most incredible fucking person on the planet. If you want to buy makeup from an actual angel that is really good quality, Gaia Minerals. (laughs) She's the best human. Oh my fucking God. I am so lucky that she is one of my closest friends and my boss. Like she's so understanding and just such a beautiful human and she's not sponsoring me to plug this, but the makeup is incredible. (laughs) It truly is. She's got the highest standards and everyone who tries it, it loves it, loves it. It's going to, it is going to be one of the biggest makeup brands in the world. I know it. She's an unstoppable queen. Anyway, I'm just really grateful for her and everything that she is doing and the honesty, you know, the honesty that she, she provides. Like she just, I always know what she's thinking. I always know where she's at. She just speaks to me openly and that allows for growth. And I love that. And I love her. So anyway, um, 
I don't, didn't feel scared and now I feel completely calm. Like it's going to be okay. And like, yes, there is a slight underlying, like, whoo, I'm still a human, you know, I'm not a fucking psycho. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I still have a little, a little like nervous underlying buzz about it. But I get that feeling before I go for a surf in the ocean, you know, I'm like, will I die today? Who knows? <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm not. I know I have too much to do before I die. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, going down to part time. So excited. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. But like I saw what the universe was doing, like that stuff that I had to do, like that taking that plunge to leave my other job was so like um, just prepping me for being able to trust the universe in this way. Like every step that I've had to take this year up until this point has been prepping me to, you know, be able to be more frugal with money, to like prioritize my energy over everything, prioritize creativity, um, really like speak my truth more, lean into trusting the universe just wholeheartedly because I know that soon this is going to absolutely skyrocket and I'm going to need to have the availability to deal with that, right? And if I'm working full time, that wouldn't allow for it. So I've created the space. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> so that's that update. I'm so excited. Fucking hell. <laughs> Hardly know what to do with myself about it. Anyway. And then the other thing is I'm just putting pillows around myself. If you're watching the video, because I don't know if my coochie's going to show. I'm just laying down on my bed a bit more. <laughs> um, so, the, what was that? Was there any more news? I think that's it. Uh, I'll remember later if there was more. I was pretty sure there was one more thing I was going to tell you, but I'll tell you the story that I came here to tell you. On the weekend, no, we'll go back a bit further. <laughs> you know I love telling stories for the timeline of events because it helps you see the universe just like putting puzzle pieces into place. Do you know what I mean? Like when I tell you like the timeline of events that leads up to things, not only is it more of a full story, but it's also just shows you to look out for things, like look out for the opportunities that are in front of you, look out for the conversation that the universe is trying to have with you and the collaboration. Okay. <laughs> So, oh God, this is, I'm nervous to tell you this. <laughs> okay, let's just get over it. Just tell them. <sighs> okay, so Serena messaged me like uh, maybe a month ago and she was like, I've been called again to have like another woman's gathering or like a, a medicine women's circle. So that just, it, it's not exclusive to like medicine women who are currently working as like healers, you know, like Reiki healers, psychics, um, kinesiologists, but there's more. I'm just listing a few to give you an example of medicine women for those who don't know. I only just learned about this literally like six months ago. <laughs> so, um, anyway, just like anyone who is spiritually connected on a journey wanting to, you know, connect with other people who kind of know what they're going through. And also when women who are, you know, tapped into their power, get together. It's one of the most, oh my God, like healing and powerful experiences I've ever gone through. It's so crazy. So crazy. <laughs> this is why the patriarchy tries to keep us separate. <laughs> Holy fuck. God, get all the women together. We'll change the world. Anyway. Um, so Serena was like, I've got to have another gathering. And I was like, do you know what this one's for? She's like, nope. They've just, her guides have just told her that it needs to happen and it's got to happen and we'll find out more along the way. And I was like, cool. And then she messages me again, like maybe a week after that. And she was like, oh my God. She was like, I just had the craziest download about the whole situation. She's like, I still don't have all of it. But she was like, you have to open a portal. You're going to open a portal. And that's all I know. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know how to open a portal. She was like, you'll be shown before then. That's all I know. And I was like, all right. And I just let that fall out of my head. I was like, there's absolutely no reason to freak out about not knowing how to open a portal. <laughs> oh, just trust, just trust. So I did. And um, fast forward to like a week before 
I kept waking up in the night. No, even like just trying to fall asleep. I could feel the presence of like angels around me, just kind of like encoding or something and teaching me things, showing me things. And then I was just like suddenly just, you know, traveling, viewing the universe and polarity and like all of this stuff that I've already seen a little bit about, but just, I saw so much. And then I was like, oh, I understand. Like, I understand why. Do you know what? I wish I had my journal here in front of me right now because I wrote down, like I woke up from that. I wasn't even asleep yet. It was in that in-between state, but I was like, oh my God, this is insane. I have to write it down. So I wrote it down. And then Uh, in the morning I told Serena and she was like, yeah, 100%, that's what you're going to be doing. And I was like, still don't know how. I was like, cool. I understand it now, but I don't know how. Um, but basically I was shown that I need to bring everyone with me up onto a higher angelic frequency through the heart space. And, um, oh yeah, that's right. I was shown this like gold thread came out of my heart And it went into each of the hearts of the girls who were there, who were open to it, and back into my heart. And then I took them with me up into the angelic realm. Because, like, I've been up there before. And I was like, I know how to get there. And anyway, so I saw that. But I was like, I still don't know how to get other people there. I don't even really know, like, anyway. So I just trusted that more information or I'd just be guided at the time would come through. And then it was the day of the event and I went for a surf or a swim, sorry, that morning um, with my friend Tegan. And I went, I was driving home and this breathing, I just suddenly started breathing in this way where I was, I'll do it now, hang on. (laughs) I was doing this. Um, So a long, slow breath in. And then an exhale, which goes like this. <sighs> and I just started doing that. And I was like, oh, it feels so nice. And I was like, oh, I need to do this with the girls this morning. Like I need to. And I just suddenly saw it. I saw myself clear as day in the room with them. And I was like taking them into a meditation, starting with that breathing. And then the heart thing that I saw with the gold thread. And then I didn't know what to expect after that. Um, and I was like, okay, so can you see here? It's like, I'm just getting like little dribs and drabs and it's good this way too. Cause if I got all of it at once, I think I would have forgotten the details to be honest. I got the stuff when I needed it, like the information. Um, so then I'm at the event. Everything was like really sweet. Everyone's going around the circle, just sort of talking about where they're at, like, you know, introducing ourselves and being like, here's who I am and what I do. But more importantly, we were all talking about where we're at in our like spiritual journey and emotional journey, which was really, really nice because so many of us were going through the same thing or had just been through the same thing that someone else was currently going through. So like, you know, those times when you're like, you're just in the thick of things and you're feeling quite like alone and you don't really want to hang out with the people you used to hang out with because they're into things you don't really value anymore. And You don't want to go or be around a big crowd of people because you're really protective of your energy now and you're feeling just like, oh, God, like in the thick of working through your, your, you know, emotional baggage and your shadow and your inner child stuff and just whatever it is that you're going through at the time. And it just feels like, oh, God, when will this ever end? Like, can I keep going? Like, is there a point to any of this? Like, what is the fucking point? And first of all, if you are in that place, keep going. (laughs) On the other side of that is magnetism. Everything that you need, all the people that you need that will make you feel like you're a part of something will find you, but you just need to keep going through that. Imagine yourself in like a tunnel or something and it's got lots of like thick, heavy water and you're just (laughs) wading through. (laughs) And it's not a bad tunnel. It's not a dangerous tunnel. It's just one of the tricky things that you have to do in this life on earth and it probably won't be the only time you got to go through that tunnel either, you know? It'll probably be the hardest time if it's your first time going through it. But each time after that, the water gets a little a little lighter and eventually you just get carried through. Um, so anyway, you know, sharing stories like that, I think that's just so beautiful because everyone felt so connected and so not alone. And then, and also it was amazing to see because obviously like, you know, like I used to be skeptical skeptical about 
I still have a bit of healthy scepticism. I don't just believe everything everyone tells me. I always, you know, have my own discernment and feel it out throughout my body. I'm like, do I like this? Does this resonate with me? Is this right for me when someone talks about something spiritual? Um, but at the same time, like with all these people going through spiritual awakenings and stuff, there's just, it's almost like there's symptoms. There's not like symptoms, but kind of symptoms where they're the same things that happen to the, to people across the board. And it's like, I don't know if there was a medical professional recording this data, I think it would be a lot harder to be like, what, you know, that skeptical about the spiritual stuff that's happening anyway. So we were going around talking about all of that in the circle and, um, and then, you know, Serena was like, all right, everyone, we're going to go into a group meditation and just sort of see what happens from there. And then she looked at me and was like, you know, you can do whatever it is that you need to do because she knew I had to do so. Oh, that's right. The fucking day before she was like, whatever it is, she was like, I've had a download that like literally whatever it is that we're all gathering here for, like the reason we were called here to do this is because you have to do something like whatever it is that we're doing this for is because of something that you're going to do. She was like, no pressure. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And I didn't feel pressure though. I just laughed. I was like, all right, <laughs> this will be fine. Can you believe like, can you imagine yourself in my shoes for a second where someone's like, oh, we, the universe wants all these people to be gathered and you're the person who has to take them to wherever the next place is that they need to go on their journey, like on, energetically, and no, you won't know exactly what to do until the moment you're doing it. Like, and then just to not freak out about that. I was so proud of myself afterwards. I forgot, like, I forgot to be proud of myself, but Serena was like, babe, can you just look at what you just did? She was like, it was like two months ago that you were in here coming to the climax of your current like spiritual awakening. And now a couple of months later, you're doing Reiki on like 12 people and taking them into a higher frequency. Like, are you kidding? And I was like, wow, thank you. That helped me sort of stop and appreciate what I had done. And like, yeah, anyway. So thank you, Serena, for that. That's really nice. I really love that. She always makes me slow down and fucking look at the shit I'm doing. Cause I just go so fast <laughs> anyway. So we're there on the day we've done the introducing, we've done the talking about where we're at and we're going into the meditation. So I was like, all right girls, like, so everyone's like laying down now and Serena and I were standing and I was like, I just sort of gave them like a preempting sort of, you know, I'm going to take you, I'm going to connect all of us together and, you know, get, verbalize what I'm doing so that you have a visual so you can kind of come on this journey with me up until a certain point and then I'm going to stop speaking and you can just go on whatever journey you need to go on from there and so I was talking them through that breathing and we all did that together as a group for a few breaths and I told them about how I was and like I could see it clear as day too like so I'm standing there with my eyes closed and I had like this like I could just see this gold gold cord like leaving my heart space and going into all of the girls and then connecting back to mine and then I went to like I moved upwards like I moved up and out to go to this like higher frequency and it was almost as if I was like kind of stopped because I could feel it was like holding a couple of like really heavy bags or something and the bags were too heavy for me to like lift and I was like oh they're not um here just yet like they're here. I can see them, but they weren't fully there. Um, and I was like, all right, what do I need to do? And then I saw these grids in my mind, like a couple of times throughout that session, like session of all of us being there together. And then I saw it again really strongly and I was like, oh, okay. So I went around the room and I was putting these like protection light grids on the crown and third eye of everyone. And then when I was with each person, I saw something that each of their chakras, not each of their chakras, but like each person had something that you know, the chakra needed work on. So I was doing like a bit of Reiki um, on the person while I was with them and then just would go to the next person, go to the next person. And then I came to back where I was standing and then Serena comes over and she like gestured like, hey, <laughs> what about me? <laughs> like there was no words. Everyone was really quiet. Um, and so I was like, oh, my God, I forgot to do one on us. <laughs> so I did like the light grid on her and I, like at the same time, I just had my hands at each of our foreheads and then our hearts. And then I was like, I just had this strong compulsion to put my forehead on Serena's forehead. So we're just standing there in the middle of the room with our foreheads together. And as soon as we did that, I saw a bridge like 
come together and everyone was suddenly able to like access this bridge. And I was like, oh, cool. Like amazing. That's what we needed. And then Serena just like hugged me and I felt like my heart was going to explode out of my chest. It felt like our hearts literally connected together. It was like the strongest it was like I physically, I've got goosebumps all over my body. And we hugged for like a million years. We were standing there for so long hugging. It was beautiful. And in her experience, she was like, oh my God, like galactic mom and dad are so proud of us. <laughs> and in my experience, I was just like, my heart is fucking exploding. And I was also just seeing this bridge for the people. And I was like, this is exactly what they needed. It was so beautiful. And then so we let go of the hug and my left arm just started to ache. Like it was aching and I was like what and I just felt it right rise like my arm like just suddenly lifted into the air and I started doing these symbols in the air that like my friend Becca when I was visiting her in New Zealand she was like babe I had this dream and you were like getting rid of this negative entity and you were doing these symbols in the air and you were you just cleared it away and blah 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 and I was like oh okay cool like and then when I was at this tree in New Zealand, I had this really strong visual of me doing symbols in the air. And I was like, what? And then here was the day where I did the symbols in the air. <laughs> so that was really wild. And so, yeah, I did those. And then I saw everyone behind me and I just became like so overwhelmed with this like excited, joyful, loving, like togetherness emotion. And like, I could see everyone's like higher selves and souls and everything, just, just standing there behind me, like a whole group of us. And I was like, oh my God, you guys are here. I was like, yay. <laughs> so I'm standing there in the room, just like crying. <laughs> and I was like, all right, it's time. Um, because with those symbols, I'd opened a portal and so everyone's behind me and I like had put all that protection on all of them. And I put this like bubble around myself and everyone energetically. And then like a force field sort of shield in front of us and, started going through the portal because, you know, portals are, you know, any, any I'm not going to say like anything can happen in a portal, but uh, the, you don't want to go, you don't, you don't just go into portals willy nilly with that protect, protection. You have like a guide, like a spirit guide. And I was their spirit guide in that spirit realm. You know what I mean? So I was like, well, this is a lot of responsibility and this is a lot of people. And we're just going through this fucking portal together. We were kind of shuffling. Like I was like walking in there. We were just like staying as a group. We were, like, it's like they all knew they were in this bubble with me. <laughs> it was really cute. Also, I was a bit scared. Also, I was feeling like confidence and fear. Like I could also feel all of their emotions. Like I could feel the emotions that they were all shedding because everyone was in the room was going through their own experience of like shedding baggage and dropping dead weight and like like removing dense energy that they didn't need to have on them anymore and just all this stuff to be able to come into the higher frequency. And I could feel drips and drabs of all of that from everyone. So I'm just like sobbing going through this portal, like just leading them through and just like, <laughs> oh, this sounds insane. I know. Don't worry. <laughs> and then, um, we get to the other side of the portal and I could see the most beautiful space. It was like this stunning angelic realm and it was light, like so much light. And there was this big, beautiful lake in the middle. And like, I stepped out of the portal and they all kind of stepped out, like just one after the other, like one after the other, go, 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 go. And then I closed the portal and I was like relief, just so much relief came over me. Oh my God, my body is like riddled with goosebumps right now. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, this feels like, it feels like heaven. And I couldn't believe I got them all through safely. And I was like, I can't see anything bad attached to anyone. Everyone's here. Like everyone who began at the portal, you know what I mean? Every, like I didn't lose anyone along the way. <laughs> ah, so anyway, um, it was amazing. And the, we all just started walking towards the lake and I opened my eyes and I was still feeling, I could still feel that I was still in this place, but I was aware that like human Esther on earth needed to signal to Serena that it was complete. And well, as far as it needed to be at that moment anyway, because I knew that the next, um, this other person, Kylie was going to do this beautiful, like angelic frequency singing and healing stuff that she does to bring everyone like toward the end of the meditation and out of it to sort of ground us again. And so that was, it was beautiful. Oh my gosh. It was so beautiful. Anyway, um, 
So I don't know if I should have said her name. I didn't ask her if I could. I just realized that I'm going to message her <laughs> before I publish this. <laughs> anyway, what was I? So, yeah, I secretly gave Serena, like, a thumbs up, and so she, like, gestured to Kylie that she was good to go, and then Serena, like, laid down and started going into her own meditation situation, and she just sunk into that so quickly. Um, and I sat down and just completed the rest of what we needed to do in my experience, and I was kind of just more, um, instead of, I wasn't guiding the situation anymore by this point, by the time Kylie was singing, I was part of it with everyone, observing it, and just like, Wow. I was part of it the whole time, but I wasn't, you know what I mean? I wasn't like guiding it anymore. Um, so we started running to the river or the water, the big lake and jumping in and everyone was just like, I could hear laughter and just so much joy. Like, it's like they could all just feel the, the water was like this extremely high frequency. It was so, it was like, I could see it vibrating or something. And it was like silvery white and it was just pure. It was so pure and beautiful. And um, this other, yeah, Kaja, I was, gonna, I was like, <laughs> I'm trying to be conscious of not just saying everyone's names in case they don't want to. But I talk about Kaja all the time. <laughs> so then I saw Kaja just raising up out of the water. And I was like, wow, like, this is amazing. And then, you know, we came to the end of the meditation and then we were all talking about our, our experiences afterwards. We all, I went first because I was like fucking dying to tell everyone. <laughs> I was like, you would not believe what we all just did. And so I told them all. And then one by one, everyone ran around the circle and talked about their experience. And they were like, there was water. Like I was in water. And there was a moment where Kaja was raising up out of water in her experience. And other people were like, yeah, I was running into water. I was playing in water. I was floating in water. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> there was a couple who didn't have a water experience, but the feeling was the same. Like lots of bright, bright white light and lots of um, just joy and like a heavenly feeling in like a field of flowers and stuff like that. So, you know, everyone's always going to experience the situation based on how they'll best receive it. Like their guides are going to give them the visuals that they need, you know. Um, but I just thought it was so incredible that some people were close enough to my frequency to feel and see what I saw in their experience. That was extremely validating. That was really cool because I was like, you know, everything. I'm always like, is this real? Always. I, I hope I... Just well, I was going to say, I hope I stop questioning if it's real one day, but then I was like, it's probably a good thing, really. <laughs> um, so that was lovely. Even though, like, time and time again, the universe is just proving to me again and again with these wild experiences that I have, they're always validated in one way or another. I'm like, okay, stop doubting it, Esther. But it was insane. And then since then, I have been getting told, like, so that was Sunday and it's... Wednesday and I've been told by like five people that I'm glowing and the next day Monday I had a really strong like energetic hangover the next day I had a big headache and even like the day like that afternoon after the gathering it was I just felt like I was coming down off a high I didn't have any drugs or anything but it felt like I had been on such a high um so yeah just took it easy just did my work and tried not to output too much energy and I feel great. Like yesterday I was feeling incredible. Oh, that was my other update. I was like just doing my job and blah, blah, blah. And I was texting my boss and I was like, do you reckon I look good with a bob? And she was like, what kind? Like, yeah, show me. And I'd like lifted up the ends of my long hair and she was like, yeah, you'd look cute. And then later on I'd made a Pinterest board of the kind of bob that would suit me just based on the fringe that I currently have. I was like, I'll just have a bob that suits my fringe, which turns out to be a French bob. And they're fucking cute. So cute. So anyway, my friend Haley, she's a, she used to be a hairdresser before her current life. And I was like, hey, would I regret this? She was like, nah, you'd look so good. And that was it. Like, I just got up and instantly in that moment decided I was having a bob and I could not wait to book in an appointment anywhere. There was absolutely no, I just had to do it. I had to do it right now. And so I grabbed my blunt scissors, put my hair up in a hair tie, just <laughs> hacked off my hair. <laughs> And it felt so good. And it looks so good. My bob looks amazing. If you can see the video right now, slay, right? It looks amazing. I'm obsessed. 
And I recorded the whole thing and put a video of it up on my Instagram and the girls went nuts. Everyone's was screaming. So thank you all so much for <laughs> Oh yeah. And I'm back on Instagram. My handle is Esther's, no, it's not. It's Esther's underscore universe. Um, and on TikTok as well, if you follow me on TikTok, there's a fake account out there following everyone, messaging everyone. And I've been trying to get TikTok's help with it to no resolve just yet. So if you see that, please report it. Um, hopefully no one clicks on the link that it's sending around to everyone. It's really annoying, but you know, you make it when someone's impersonating you. <laughs> oh, how's me just taking it as a compliment. <laughs> So anyway, my bob looks amazing. And I was talking to Serena. I was like, oh my God. And she was fucking screaming with me about it. So was everyone. Thank you girls for all screaming with me about it. That made me so happy. Um, and I just had no regret. You know, you know, when you cut your hair and you're like, oh, you have a bit of hair regret and you got to like get used to it. Didn't happen. This was the perfect choice to make. And I nailed it. I fucking nailed it. I did the cut so well. I just trusted it. I saw the vision so clearly in my head and it just happened. I just manifested the best bob ever. <laughs> and... Um, Serena was like, hair carries guilt, not guilt, grief, hair carries grief. And she was like, you know, that's why like after lots of big, hard, challenging things that people go through in life, they want to cut their hair off. And I was like, bro, I've gone through so much this year. I'm cutting off dead weight. And also just went into so such higher frequencies with everyone. Like it makes sense. Like I just wanted to shed all that was old and keeping me down. And some of that was apparently the hair <laughs> on my head. <laughs> So yeah, I thought that was really cool and it feels really good and I'm really glad. And um, <clears throat> me and Serena and Andrea are talking about organizing a retreat because, and this was just another thing. She was like, I've been told like by my guides that we need to do a retreat and we talked about it and both of us are so, like we understand that we need money to survive in the 3D world, but like... I try, I don't know, like I'm always, like every time we talk, I, I'm always like, I just think everyone needs to be helped for free, but obviously you need a paywall to protect your energy in some ways. Cause a lot, like lots of people will just come in and take, 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 and you can't just be drained. Right. And also you need to survive in this world cause we still live on earth. So I get it. I get why we need to charge for things, but we like these two women's gatherings that we've done so far have been like, you know, free. They won't all be free. These ones need to be free. Some will be free. Some will be paid. We don't know. It's all just completely guided by the universe, to be honest. We don't really know anything about this stuff until it comes through, which is my favorite thing. I don't really want to go to too much preordained shit. I want to go to things that universe is like, hey, you have to be here. You know, like if it feels right, if you feel called, do the thing. And that's how we are doing this stuff. And it's just because we want to, because we need to, because we see the importance of helping people you know, get through all of this shit and to change the world. Um, so we were like, all right, like how can we get this retreat happening in the way where we either just break even, like it just doesn't cost us money or there's a small profit because we'll be taking people through so much, like so many energetic upgrades and doing so much healing on people and just using our powers combined to like help us, you know, many people we can have there. Um, so we're kind of just nutting all of that out. Um, it was so cool too, because Andrea came to me like months and months and months ago. And she was like, I really think that like, she was like, we need to put a, like a retreat together. But she was like, just have a bunch of women who are like medicine women. And we all come and like use each other's gifts on each other and heal each other. And I was like, sounds amazing, but not right now. Like I was like, I, I'm not in the place. I was like, you've obviously like seen something that will happen, but not for me right now. Um, but you know, let's put it on the back burner. And she was like, sweet. And then, um, so fast forward by like four or five months, maybe Serena was like, we have to have a retreat. I've seen it, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. And then she was like, but obviously you and I, she was like, we're so, you know, floaty. <laughs> she was like, we need someone who's really practical and analytical and like able to organize this whole thing and like come into it with us. So we can like focus on all the healing modalities and what, that people will experience and get all that guidance. And then we just need like a third person who is also like a medicine woman, but with a very, very strong set of organizational skills. <laughs> and I was like, bro, I know the person. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was like, Hey, Andrea, 
do you want to? And like, it's almost like I couldn't even finish the fucking sentence. And she was like, yep. <laughs> so it's come together. We haven't fully organized it. We don't know much yet. We haven't booked the place. We're still doing all the things. Um, but that's in the works and I'm really excited. Like I've never even been to a retreat, but that's the thing. Like I don't want to mold it after anything. I don't really want to control this at all. Like that's, I just want to fully trust that this will work out exactly as it needs to for everyone's highest good. And I'm really excited. So yeah, I'll keep you updated on all of that. And that is the story for today. Oh my God, no. Got a question from the Ask Esther that I did. I put a thing up on Instagram. I'm going to do this once every, maybe once a couple, every couple of weeks. And I'm just going to put up an Ask Esther thing on my Instagram question box. And can you guys, if you have any questions, if you're like, oh my God, I have questions about the universe. I've got questions about, you know, anything that you talk about, I've got questions just about my own life and situations that I'm experiencing, then ask me if I can't, obviously like I'll try and answer as many as I can. Um, if it's something that I just is not my area, I might not answer it. Or if it is my area, but there's like 50,000 other questions that are similar, then I'll, who knows? You know what I mean? Like, hopefully I get to answer your question. Can't make promises. Um, so I want to do one of those today. Okay, so I'm going to answer probably like two of the questions from Ask Esther. Now, <laughs> this one is so sweet. <laughs> I love it. It says, your energy is so infectious and it radiates in everything you put out, which is so sweet. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. My question is, what things do you do to stay in this energy, especially in times of doubt and fear? I hope that makes sense. P.S. You're amazing. Every podcast episode I finish listening to, I'm like, okay, now I just want to message Esther and keep talking. I'm not finished. <laughs> oh my God, I love you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So what do I do to stay in my high vibing energy, especially in times of doubt and fear? It's a really good one. I... Okay, so the first thing that came to mind just then is the protection of my energy. It's like, it's incredibly important to start watching where your energy goes. Like visualize it in a sense that's more tangible if you need to. So pretend your energy is, I don't know, like a gold fluid or something. And so when you're having an interaction with another human being, imagine this gold fluid leaving your body and going into them. And you're like, all right. Is anything, are they also giving me their energy back in return? Am I getting any gold fluid from them or is it just me leaking into them and them not leaking back into me? And how much is coming out? Is it energy that I'm happy to see go into this person? Is it energy that I'm feeling a bit drained from? Do you know what I mean? And then you think about your work and you're like, all right, so picturing my work, how much of this gold fluid is leaving my body to go into my work? Am I putting too much energy in? Am I too invested? Am I tying too much of my self-worth into the, how much I put into my job? Um, and then you think about like your energy cup needing to be filled up with more gold fluid. What things fill up your cup? Like which, which activities in your life make you feel like the most well-rested afterwards or the most full of joy or the most excited afterwards? And have I been doing enough of those? And so when you start to really watch your energy and start to see where it's all going, you really actually see it for what it is. And you're like, oh my fucking God. It's almost like this really like slap in the face moment when you realize you've just been dumping your energy in really like wasteful places for so long. <laughs> and you start to call it back in. You start to like detach your energy from the people who don't deserve it. You start to put less into your day job if it's not really serving you to put so much in there. You start to put more of it into um, things that feel really good for you. You start to put just an emphasis on the life force inside you and where it's going. <laughs> um, and that's just honestly so incredible and so important and it's very helpful to maintain energy and to move into higher vibrations. So the more energy you have, and it's not to say like, you know, I'm not saying that everyone has to be like a fucking hyperactive Tasmanian devil like me. <laughs> Another Tazzy devil. What am I talking about? Remember, um, do you know the guy, like little Tazzy, Tazzy devil that just spins around a little hurricane in circles? Do you know what I'm talking about? It was like a Looney Tunes thing or something. Um, I was picturing myself as that. Like you don't need to have that same energy, 
but your own version of like a high frequency, high vibration, whatever that looks like for you. You know what I mean? And like reserving your energy and just putting it into places that actually need it and that make you feel good as well. Like that is how you will stay in a higher frequency. Cause it, it really, at the end of the day, that's balance. Like, you know, when you're like, Oh, I just wish I had more balance in my life. Like feeling really drained, feeling really burnt out. I'm feeling up and down. Like one minute I'm ecstatic and I'm like, yay. And the next I'm like so exhausted and I can't speak to anyone. I just have to get through the hard shit. And then next thing you know, I'm like, yay. And then it just keeps, you know, if you're feeling up and down or out of balance or drained or just like not, you don't have a fucking good, like equilibrium going on. What you need to do is start looking at your energy and start seeing it for what it is and start to like really just protect it, protect your energy. It is your life force. It's your currency. Think about energy more than money. Money is energy. Just think about energy as your main thing and you'll notice that you start to protect it and balance it. So when life is really hard and stuff, that's probably the first thing that I look at. I'm like, all right, what am I doing? How can I help myself right now? Is it difficult? Like, cause it's self-inflicted. Am I draining myself? Am I putting, am I putting too much energy into something that doesn't need as much as I'm putting in. If not, if it's an external thing that I just need to move through, then I'm like, all right, the universe is doing this for a reason. I have to learn a lesson from this. And then I identify the lesson that I'm in while I'm going through it. And then that helps as well. Cause then I can start moving out the other side of it faster. Um, and then I, I also see like things that are difficult as a gift now, because I've gone through enough hard times in my life and built up enough resilience to be like, oh, well, this doesn't roll me as hard anymore. And I know that on the other side of this is joy and abundance. <laughs> so I'm like, bring it on. Um, and, and I also just go, I go into a bit of a hibernation if really required. Like if it's a real big hard time, I will hibernate. I'm not going to give my energy out to anyone. It's where I need it the most. I'm going to go insular. I'm going to look inside myself deeply. I'm going to, um, do things that just as much of self care as I can self care. Uh, I don't want to just keep pushing through hard times and things that feel bad, obviously when things are hard and you need to go through them or you just can't get out of them, you just got to push through and get through it. But if self care is what's needed, identify that, but you'll understand that when you start really looking at your energy, you know, you'll know what you need. Um, and that helps you stay in a high vibration plus gratitude, gratitude for everything. Like I look outside and I'm like, wow, so grateful for the birds. Like so grateful for every blue sky that I see. It's like when I look at nature, it's almost like the first time I've ever seen it in my fucking life every day. That's how grateful I am for it. So when you're grateful for just the things that are free around you, like imagine something decent happening in your day. You're just like, whoa, I've fucking hit the jackpot. <laughs> like you can have that feeling every day. <laughs> so hopefully that helps. And then the other question I wanted to answer today was very interesting. Um, should I, how long has this pod been going for? Five minutes, no, 55 minutes, about 50 minutes. You know what? I'm going to save this for the next app. So that's it. Oh, Serena just texted me. Okay. That was great. Good chat, everyone. Love you so much. Thanks for being here. If you want to be a part of the Ask Esther thing, follow me on Instagram. It's Esther's underscore universe and TikTok Esther's underscore universe. Blah, blah, blah. Love you so much. Please share the pod or, you know, do something to help me get it out there. If you can, I want to change the world. I love you. Bye. I'm going to say it again. Love you. Bye. <laughs>